This podcast is brought to you by LMU Munich. Yeah, so uh, today I'll be presenting work done in collaboration with Jim, and hopefully uh, by the end of it you'll understand why Jim uh, so confidently claimed that there is no difference between the holonomy and fiber bundle interpretations of Yang Mills theory, because that definitely isn't the dominant view. Uh, so, uh, to reiterate, in the philosophy of physics literature, uh, the interpretations of Yang Mills theory uh, divide roughly into two camps based on two distinct geometric formulations of the theory. Uh, the fiber bundle interpretation is taken to be the received view. According to it, each point in space-time is associated with a Lie group G, forming what's called a principal bundle over space-time. So um, again, what would otherwise be called the vector potential in electromagnetism or Yang-Mills field more generally is then understood in terms of something called a connection on that principal bundle, and the Yang-Mills field strength is the curvature of that connection. In contrast, the holonomy interpretation associates loops on space-time with elements of the structure group G, called the holonomies of the loops. Holonomies encode the change of phase of the state of a matter field associated with a particle going around the loop. This information is sufficient to determine the effects of the Yang-Mills field on charged particles. Uh, there appear to be costs associated with each interpretation. For instance, in the holonomy interpretation, properties of a system are non-local in the sense that uh, they're related to curves on space-time rather than individual space-time points or localized regions of space-time. Uh, on the other hand, it's often said that the fiber bundle interpretation postulates strictly more structure than is necessary to describe Yang-Mills theories, whereas the holonomy interpretation doesn't have this kind of excess structure. Uh, this talk is going to focus on the latter point. I'm going to try to make that criticism more precise. Uh, so at first glance, it uh, is easy to understand why the fiber, it seems like the fiber in bundle interpretation has more stuff. Uh, because, you know, we have to associate a uh, Lie group with every point on space-time. But if it turns out that all of this extra stuff can be uniquely and naturally uh, derived from a holonomy model of the theory, uh, then this criticism of the fiber bundle interpretation would lose its force. So that's what I'm going to argue. Uh, so how are we supposed to evaluate claims of relative structure between the two interpretations? We're first going to need to make precise what a model of Yang-Mills theory is, according to each interpretation. Uh, then we can ask if there's a natural correspondence between holonomy models and fiber bundle models. Uh, and such a correspondence is, in fact, given by Jonathan Barrett in 1991. But this, in, this correspondence doesn't tell us that much more than that both interpretations can describe the same set of physical systems. Uh, in order to consider the relative structure of the interpretations, we'll need to define a relevant notion of isomorphism or equivalence of models for each interpretation. Equivalent models should correspond to the same physical system. There's already an established notion of what it means for fiber bundle models to be isomorphic, uh, but it took some work to find out uh, what the right notion is for holonomy models. We can then understand the statement, the fiber bundle interpretation has more structure than the holonomy interpretation, as claiming that there are non-isomorphic fiber bundle models which correspond to the same, to isomorphic holonomy models. This would tell us that the fiber bundle interpretation has excess mathematical features that, according to the holonomy interpretation, don't make any physical difference. Uh, in the same way, we can understand the claim that two interpretations are structurally equivalent by saying that isomorphic fiber bundle models correspond to isomorphic holonomy models. And that's what I'm going to conclude. So once we've defined everything we need to make this precise, showing that the holonomy models are, uh, that holonomy models correspond to isomorphic fiber bundle models is pretty straightforward, uh, uh, but it's going to take a lot more work to show the other direction, which is that if you have uh, isomorphic holonomy models, then you have isomorphic fiber bundle models. Um, and so that's going to be the main result of this project. Um, so now I'm going to uh, move on to formulating what a model of Yang-Mills theory is according to the fiber bundle interpretation. Uh, so the first thing we'll need is a principal bundle, which we've already talked about. Uh, roughly, a principal bundle uh, consists of a manifold P and a map pi from P onto our space-time, which projects what are called fibers at, at X, which are isomorphic to the structure group G, down to points X. Uh, essentially, each point in space-time is associated with an isomorphic copy of G, which is called the fiber at that point. Uh, so then, a connection on a principal bundle is the smooth assignment of a collection of what are called horizontal lifts to each space-time curve. 
So here's how to understand horizontal lifts. Uh, you pick a space-time curve. Here I have gamma and some element in the fiber over its initial point. Uh, and then there are in general going to be many ways to associate gamma with some lift into the fibers. And the connection just tells you uh, for any given uh, curve and any given point in the fiber over its initial point how you're supposed to do that. Um, and in particular, we're going to need to look at principal connections. And this is just uh, particular connections that are uh, compatible with the Lie group structure. So if you have a, uh, a curve gamma and you lift it up to u, then if uh, you have another point v, which you get to by acting on u by g on the right, uh, then, you're, uh, then the two lifts are going to be related by g throughout. So, uh, in particular, if also, if you think of a space-time curve as the trajectory of a particle, then the connection tells us how the state of the particle is going to change as it follows that curve. Uh, so, we can now characterize the, holonomy, uh, the fiber bundle interpretation by the basic data required to write a fiber bundle model of Yang-Mills theory with structure group G. Uh, these are going to be a space-time, a principal G bundle over that space-time, and a principal connection on that principal bundle. Uh, we can thus define the fiber bundle models as ordered pairs consisting of a principal bundle pi and a principal connection gamma on it. All right, so in order to uh, look now at the holonomy interpretation, we'll need to define holonomy. Uh, so if we're given a fiber bundle model and a piecewise smooth closed curve uh, on spacetime, the holonomy of that curve relative to the connection uh, through a given point in the fiber over the base point of the closed curve is the element G of our Lie group such that if you lift the curve to the initial point that you've chosen, the final point of the curve is going to be related to that initial point by G. And so this is important to note that, uh, as Jim said, uh, if you lift a closed curve, it isn't necessarily going to start and end at the same point. And when they do, that's going to correspond to a flat connection. And so the holonomies encode the sense in which a connection uh, is curved or fails to be flat. Uh, so you might have noticed that this definition relies on an underlying fiber bundle model. And if we're going to compare the holonomy interpretation with the fiber bundle interpretation, we're going to need a way to understand holonomies in the absence of underlying fiber bundle models. Otherwise, it seems just like an add-on. Um, so that's what we're going to do next. Uh, so first note that given some element u of our principal bundle, the image under the holonomy map of the set of space-time loops uh, based at the projection pi of u is always a Lie subgroup of the structure group G, which is called the holonomy group. Uh, this is because constant loops always map to the identity element of G, reverse-oriented loops always map to inverse elements, and the holonomy of the composition of loops is the composition of the holonomies of each loop. Um, so next, if uh, we have two curves that are thinly equivalent, meaning that their images differ on at most curves of empty interior, and they have the same orientation, then their images under the holonomy map are the same. And this is going to be because uh, uh, every curve has a unique horizontal lift. So if you're going around a curve and you go out along some curve and then you go back, you're not going to move. Um, so then now if we take our loop space uh, of loops at a particular base point and mod out by thin equivalence, we can think of the resulting space as a, a group uh, with the operation of reparameterized composition. Uh, modding out by thin equivalence allows us to think of the class of loops that are thinly equivalent to the constant loop as the identity, and hence uh, the equivalence class of a loop and the equivalence class of its reverse orientation are inverses of one another, since their composition is thinly equivalent to the constant loop. Uh, now if we add some smoothness conditions, uh, we get differential structure. And I'm not going to go into detail on these smoothness conditions, but these are going to be the minimal ones required such that our ordinary notion of holonomy maps on fiber bundle models are smooth. Uh, and then this, oh, oh, 
this allows us to define a generalized homotomy map as a smooth map from uh, uh, the set of loops at a base point to G, which is such that if you mod out by thin equivalence, you get a group homomorphism. Uh, and so again, we can think of uh, holonomy models as ordered pairs consisting of a manifold and uh, that such a holonomy map. Um, so we can now ask whether there's a natural correspondence between fiber bundle models and holonomy models of a Yang-Mills theory. Uh, we've seen by the way in which holonomy maps are originally defined that in the context of an underlying fiber bundle model uh, and a base point, we can get a corresponding holonomy map on the same space time. But it's not quite as obvious that you can always find a fiber bundle model associated to a given holonomy model. Uh, luckily, it turns out that the way we define generalized holonomy maps does let us uh, construct such a fiber bundle model, <laughs> uh, which was shown by Jonathan Barrett in 1991. Uh, his construction, which I can talk about later if you guys want, is uh, involves the elements of the principal bundle uh, corresponding to certain equivalence classes of ordered pairs, each consisting of a curve on space-time and an element of the holonomy group. Uh, so we're also interested in whether this principal bundle and connection pair is the only one up to principal bundle isomorphism with a holonomy map corresponding to H. And Barrett does have a uniqueness theorem. So for Barrett, the state space of, a fiber, of the fiber bundle interpretation consists of triples of a principal bundle, a principal connection, and a base point in which such triples are equivalent if there is a principal bundle isomorphism between them that matches the connections and base points and acts on the, as the identity on space-time. So in this case, he claims that the reconstruction theorem generates a bijection between holonomy models and such equivalence classes of base-pointed fiber bundle models. As stated, however, this theorem is technically false. Uh, one also needs to consider as equivalent holonomy models that are related by inner automorphisms of the ranges, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, but there are other ways in which holonomy models can be equivalent to one another that aren't considered. Moreover, we'd like to be able to consider fiber bundle models without reference to a particular base point, since these don't play a role unless we start looking at holonomies. So we thus want a definition of holonomy isomorphism that identifies all and only holonomy models that differ only by features that should not be physically significant. These include models related by isomorphisms or automorphisms of the structure group that acts as the range of the generalized holonomy map, uh, diffeomorphisms of the base space, and a change of base point at which the holonomy map is defined. So there are two ways in which a change of base point should not change the significance of a holonomy model. We want it to be the case that holonomy models associated to the same principal bundle model with a different choice of base point in the same fiber are isomorphic. Uh, we also want to understand the same holonomy map associated to loops based at different space time points. So it turns out that the first case corresponds to an inner automorphism of the structure group. This is because of the equivariance of the connection. Uh, since the lift of a loop gamma to u, uh, is related by A to the lift of gamma to some other point UA. Uh, the holonomies of the loops considered at B are just conjugations by A of the holonomies of those loops considered at U. Uh, and moreover, the equivariance of the principal connection also allows us to identify holonomies at different space-time points. So let's say we have a holonomy map uh, defined in terms of loops at some uh, space-time point X and we want to rewrite it in terms of loops at some other space-time point, x prime. We can do this by picking some piecewise smooth curve from x to x prime and defining our new h prime as taking um, that as h prime of gamma is going to give you whatever you get from h by going along alpha around gamma and then back along alpha. And in the context of an underlying principal bundle model, uh, this is going to give you the exact same uh, value. So it looks a bit strange because the loops that we're looking at at x have tails. But it turns out that you're still going to get representatives from each equivalence class of thinly equivalent loops. Uh, so it'll work out. So all right. 
These considerations indicate a definition of holonomy isomorphism as a triple consisting of a diffeomorphism of the space-time manifold, a space-time curve corresponding to a change of base point of the holonomy map, and a Lie group isomorphism of the range of the holonomy map. This is illustrated by this commutative diagram. All right, so we have, uh, first, this is just going to be a Lie group isomorphism. Uh, this is going to be our uh, diffeomorphism of the base space, and this is going to be the map that takes us from one base point to another base point. Um, and so, now, uh, with this definition of holonomy isomorphism, we can consider the main theorem of this project, which shows that if holonomy models of a Yang-Mills theory are related by such a holonomy isomorphism, then the fiber bundle models given by the Barrett reconstruction are related by a principal bundle isomorphism, which is also an isomorphism of the connections. Uh, so let's review. We first gave a formal definition of Yang-Mills theory according to each interpretation. We then showed that there's a natural correspondence between the models of these interpretations. And then we define the relevant notion of isomorphism for fiber bundle models uh, as principal bundle isomorphisms that match, up to the connection, that match up the connections. I then presented a theorem, which I totally promise I have a proof for, which shows that isomorphic <laughs> which shows that isomorphic holonomy models correspond to isomorphic fiber bundle models. And because of the way fiber, uh, that holonomies are originally defined in terms of underlying fiber bundle models, uh, this, the converse is going to be easily proved. Um, and so we can thus conclude that holonomy models are isomorphic to one another if and only if their corresponding fiber bundle models are isomorphic, which is the condition I initially gave for the two theories to be structurally equivalent. So another way of understanding this result is as showing that the categories associated to the two interpretations, which take the models as objects and isomorphisms as arrows, are categorically equivalent. One might still have other reasons to favor one interpretation over the other, but I think these results show that an argument based on relative structure of one interpretation over the other will not work uh, on a formal understanding of structure. Thank you. <laughs>